Hey everyone, Katie and Sergeant Steele here. And today, we're going to talk about one of the most awesome units for the Astro Militarum. The Crassus Armored Transport! So let's talk about the biggest chunk of resin that isn't Legends to transport the Astro Militarum models. And that is the Crassus Armored Transport. Look at this thing. It is just massive. So... I built this model quite a while ago and painted it up. I'm extremely happy with it in terms of a hobby kit. Uh, so just the detail that's available in this is phenomenal. There's the entire interior. You can't see it on this video, I'm sorry. Um, but um, there's all the wires and everything in there. The ramp drops down. You could really make great dioramas with this. I've seen it done so many times. Um, and with that, the only thing that's kind of a downside to the kit is there used to be a lot of old Forge World options like this little guy here. You could get and put in the turret. Those are no longer available. Now you're going to have to either find those third party, uh, you know, recasts or take the new plastic ones and trim them down so they fit inside of the hatches for this model to do that. But it's got all kinds of great stuff regardless. It's got, you know, your searchlight. It comes with four heavy bolters as your standard stuff. Um, and, you know, cool little fuel tanks on the back. Assembly of this model is pretty straightforward, too. In terms of a resin kit, if it's not warped, if it is if it is warped, you just got to boil it in some water, straighten it out. If it's not warped, it's got your two side tracks, your sponsons on each of those uh, sides of the hull. It's got the top part of the front chassis, the bottom part, the top here, the ramp, and one wall for the interior. I think uh, also the exhaust pipe comes in a separate piece and that's pretty much it. It's a quick assembly and then you're off to painting this thing. And as you can tell, it looks amazing. So why not check it out? It's one of the resin models that's now available on warhammer.com. Uh, now the Forge World website's been integrated in. So cool kit definitely look at it so this unit is also in case you all see it and you don't get the reference it is a bit of an internet meme uh, because of reddit so a lot of people when they write about this unit spell it out all caps crassus armored transport now if you go to look it up now in the index sheets it is just crassus so sorry everybody who fell in love with that accidental typo on well kind of a typo just a formatting thing on reddit uh, now uh, it's just the Crassus and the data sheet. Why? Why on God's green earth would you want to take a Crassus? What would possibly interest you in this gigantic model? Here, I want to show you for scale. That's a Chimera. That is a Chimera next to a Crassus. It is a huge size difference. Um, and that can be to your benefit. I'll talk about that some in the tactics and strategy part of this video. So let's start as we always do with the unit profile. And this one is very different, right? Uh, we're not talking about our standard astronomical term vehicles. Crassus has a very, very different profile. So we have movement 10, toughness 11, two of armor save. We have 18 wounds and it does degrade. Uh, once you get down to six wounds, you subtract one from your hit rolls. It has Leadership 7 and OC of 5. It has an OC of 5. That is that is way better than most transports. That is uh, getting into like the Titanic equivalent um, where some of our much larger models have that kind of higher OC. And the Crassus does bring that to the table. So that's a cool thing. Keep in mind. So this is an extremely tough unit. Right, 10th edition has made it so vehicles are much more resilient now. And if you don't bring good anti-armor, you'll struggle. You'll struggle a lot. Even if you do bring some anti-armor, you'll struggle. And this unit with its toughness 11, two up save and 18 wounds is definitely going to last. So let's talk about war gear real quick. Um, just in terms of weapons, like I said, it comes with four heavy bolters. Uh, historically, it used to have a bunch of other weapon options, but uh, now you only get what comes in the kit. And when you order this from warhammer.com, it only comes with four heavy bolters. So that's it. But you can also add on a heavy stubber or a storm bolter up here at the hatch if you would like to. 
So those are your only weapons, but with four heavy bolters, that means this thing also has pretty decent shooting. Uh, and that is going to come in very important for the next part about this unit. And that is its special ability. So it is called fire support. This is what makes this model special. In your shooting phase, after this model has shot, Select one enemy unit that was hit by one or more of those attacks. And until the end of the phase, each time a friendly model that disembarked from this transport, this turn makes an attack that targets the, that enemy unit. So during that shooting phase, you can reroll the wound roll. Particular attention to that. Not reroll ones, not reroll a wound roll. For, it, for all the attacks, you can reroll the wound roll. That is huge. That is a massive buff depending on what you're putting inside of this. So, wait a minute. What can you put inside of this? Great question. That's the other thing that makes this model amazing. So, as you can tell, it was much bigger than a Chimera. So surely it can transport a lot more models. And yes, yes it can. 36 models is the transport capacity of a Crassus. That is a lot of models. Let, let's, let's visualize that real quick. All right, you know I love to do this. So uh, here is 10 Cadians, right? Uh, here is 20 Cadians, okay, all right. So let's uh, put that there, we'll put those here. If you want these movement trays, these are from Squad Marks, you can get 10% off using my discount code in the description below. They also have a command squad with them. They also have a Cadian Castellan. Oh, that's only 26 models so far. Oh, okay, let's throw in three Ogren. Two. That counts as 35 models. Now, if I didn't want to do that, I could take out the Castellan, right? I could take out the three Ogren, and I could add another 10 Cadians in there, or 30 of whatever infantry I want in their command squad. Or I could take three individual 10-man infantry units of some type plus a character with each one of those units, maybe even two characters with a couple of them. 36 model. Look what happens when I disembark. Just with this, I can wrap the Crassus itself. And I'm, and I'm I have Ogrens out here right now, right? I, I don't even actually have uh, 10 more infantry models in this demonstration right now, uh, because I wanna talk about some of the tactics and strategies that I'm gonna recommend with this. Just look at the ground you cover disembarking this transport that's the capability of this thing when your units get out right they the crashes shoots first is what you would do it's going to hit a unit and after it has shot at a unit everything else that disembarked from this transport gets reroll wound rolls and also don't forget because of the january 2024 balanced data slate update you can now issue orders with characters when they disembark from transports it also means you could do a couple really cool cheeky things with this. That means you could disembark and then issue orders to units nearby. You could issue orders to the units that were inside that just got out. It gives you a lot of tactical flexibility. This is important, okay? And this is why size matters when it comes to transports. I can't even, my camera angle isn't even wide enough to actually show you how massive this really is. Okay, so this model is about eight, nine inches long. I'm gonna move it clear over to the edge of the camera frame. When you disembark, you have to disembark within three inches and you can move your regular move, right? Okay. Right about there, right about at my flag, it's nine inches from the back of that transport. I want you to think about that real quick. You went nine inches forward and nine inches backwards. Say you disembark two units. Well, that's 18 inches. Plus the eight or nine inches for the model, right? You're talking 26, 27 inches of diameter that you could disembark models and grab object. 27 inches. Oftentimes, objective markers at their farthest points apart on the battlefield in terms of one to the next, it's usually about 16 inches. So if you park the Crassus at one in the middle, you could nearly disembark and grab another objective. You you could get, you could like, right? Say the tip up here is touching one objective. So this is OC5 on its own, right? 
it's touching an objective, you could disembark and get to another objective, an entirely different objective. That's that's huge in terms of reach. That's where you have to think about how physically this model is different in addition to its transport capacity. So then when you're rerolling your rune rolls, this could be important for a lot of things. Maybe it's using your las guns to kill infantry. Maybe it's your melta guns to take down vehicles. Remember, these are only these are much lower strength now. They often only wound vehicles and extremely tough monsters on fives. So now you're re-rolling those wound rolls. You're fishing for fives and sixes. That's really awesome and can bolster your firepower um, and really make you much more effective. The other thing to keep in mind about this is that it keeps your units alive. This thing's resilient. You can fit a lot in it and your opponent can't shoot them until you disembark them. So that means your infantry stick around longer and you're not using your CP early on in the game for reinforcements. Save those CP, use them later, and this and other transports will help you do that. I do think transports are important, especially now that guard orders have changed and the way they function in 10th edition. So keep that in mind, that can make this much more effective. Now, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this just beyond troops, right? I've already talked about you can fit 35 regular infantry in there. That could be a command squad plus three um, infantry squads of 10 or one of 20, one 10 with the command squad. Or you could do what I've got here, three Ogren, Castellan, or a commander of some type, a character, a command squad, and a 20 man unit. But you could do some other kind of cheeky stuff with this as well. So what might that look like? So the other thing that you could do, you could fit three Cyclops in there. Plus, that's so these each count as seven. Uh, if you, Cyclops is another Forge World model. It's now available on Warhammer.com. Uh, so you could get three of those. And then you could still, that takes up, there's seven each, so that's 21. So add 10 man infantry, that's 30. One, 32, and you could add in another character for 33. These things, when they disembark, uh, they can disembark, move, and you could either capture an objective with them, uh, or they could then explode. Or maybe you could get behind enemy lines or a lot of other cheeky movement things that could be necessary for you to win your game. So Cyclops Demolition Vehicles uh, have become a favorite of some guard players because of that. They're really small, they're cheap, they're 25 points currently. That could change later, right? I'm recording this in the first quarter of 24. But with that, they're super cheap and you could do that. That's another combo you could do. Now they don't get any bonus from the ability of the Crassus because this is not a shooting attack. It's just a unit ability when they explode and do their mortal wounds. I'll cover that in a separate video for them another time. So that means you probably want to stick shooting units inside of this, right? That's why I recommend infantry mostly, but okay, you could go against the grain if you wanted to. You really could. So let's talk about that. And one of your other options could be just lots and lots of Bulgren or Ogren. You can fit 12 Bulgrens. That's a total of 12 Bulgren models, which is really great. That means you could put in two six man units, or you could do a six man unit of Bulgren, a six man unit of Ogren. You could do maybe four units of three. It really creates a lot of opportunity for you to run your Ogren and Bulgren in mass units or in mass blobs together as separate units and then dump them out onto the battlefield. And then that could max out what you could put in there. You could put a couple of characters that you could have in there to be independent, uh, you know, not attached because Bulgrens can't take any characters currently and or Ogrens can't either. So you could fit 12 models inside of here of Ogrens, Bulgrens, and just keep that in mind when you're list building and in case you want to run a melee heavy guard list. So you could just have a like super resilient transport with super resilient units inside of it jumping out. Now, if you take the Grenadier Gauntlets, you could benefit from the shooting. So that is an option you could take a look at. Uh, most of the time though, you're gonna run the Bulgrim Malls and you're gonna try to beat some stuff up. You're gonna try to use those things and smash models into oblivion. But this is an option you could look at if you wanted to try something, like I said, a little bit against the grain. 
Ogrens would benefit though, because they're ripper guns. You're gonna get out and then really be able to shred space marines. By the way, when these guys get out, they also have an additional AP if they shoot the closest eligible unit. Uh, so then being able to have additional AP and then reroll their wounds could be really, really beneficial. They do only have t-shirt saves. They have five up saves. They die very easily, but it's something you could do. It's something you could look at. Another option that's not quite as efficient, but it could be effective in certain maybe builds and play styles is you could also take your regimental attaches with your command squad inside with your troops. The reason you might want to do that is so this way that they can disembark and be alive and be able to use their buffs, their sustained hits one, use their plus one to hit with aircraft against enemy models and block out deep strikers. Gosh, I love this thing recently in a game against Grey Knights. It was really awesome and really helped me out to control the board. So that could be really beneficial too because if they're just hanging out in the open and your opponent can shoot them turn one or turn two, you may not get to use them. So you could put them in a transport now, because it's three models with the attaches on top of your command squad, then you add in, well, let's just look at that. So you have 20, say 20 models in an infantry squad, eight models with your attache, so it's 28 models. It only leaves you seven transport capacity left, right? So realistically, all you're gonna be able to do is attach another character maybe to the unit two, like a Castellan, maybe throw a few independent other characters in there that are not attached to units is not common for guard but we could do it uh we talked earlier like in the commissar video some people use the commissars that way don't forget the disembark range from this thing so that could be one way you could run this with the units inside i mostly am probably going to run this with krieg or i'm going to run it with a unit with leontis or some other type of uh, buff resili resilient 20 man blob of infantry just right up the middle of the table at the start of the game that's, that's usually how I'm gonna run these, but you could look at putting those in there and then running your units that way. So let's talk about the downsides of this, okay? Crassus is awesome. We've, we've talked about how awesome the Crassus is. Now let's talk about the downsides to it. One of the things is you can't enhance your movement with move, 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 because the way the January 2024 balanced data slate works, you issue the order with your commander, it disembarks from a transport at the end of that phase. So you can't disembark and then order move, move, move and get an extra three inches movement because it doesn't happen until the phase is ending. So you really can only give yourselves like the take cover or the fixed bayonets or the first ring fire, second ring fire, take aim buffs to your infantry. Move, move, move is not gonna benefit you. Uh, you could also do the higher objective control one, right? Um, that could be beneficial to take an objective, but. Normally, if you're disembarking a fresh unit, especially buffed with a banner, that's not going to be a problem for you. Um, so keep in mind, you can't do move, move, move and jump out. The other thing that's kind of a downside about the Crassus is it doesn't have firing deck. Whereas our Chimeras do. Our Toroxes don't, if I'm remembering correctly, but Chimeras do. That's a really great benefit of Chimeras, so you lose that. The other thing you don't have is Chimeras have mobile command vehicle. Crassus does not. So you cannot issue orders while embarked inside the Crassus. So the Crassus doesn't have the same transport capabilities as the Chimera. So you're trading that off when you're bringing one of these. But the upside is you can fit a whole lot inside of there. Can you fit a 10-man squad with a uh, command squad attached to them and a Chimera? Nope. But you can in a Crassus with a lot more to go with them too. And so this is where you're, it's a little give and take. It's something you really got to think about. So would I run an entire army of like three Crassus, let's say, and no Chimeras? Mm, probably not, because I do like the flexibility of the Chimeras and what they bring to the table. But you could potentially do that. Now, another thing to keep in mind is now we can bring in reserves, um, transports from reserves, and disembark from reserves. So that does give you the option to bring this in, disembark a unit immediately, and both the Crassus and the unit shoot. Now you're gonna need a lot of real estate on the table 
in order to fit all of this into one spot. Depending on what you're up against, right? If you're not up against another horde army and your opponent hasn't screened you from the edge of the table, that could be feasible. And that's something you could look at doing. So that's a great way to kind of play around with this too, have fun with it and do some awesome things. The other thing is just in terms of like trade-off, the last thing I want to say about that is you can fit 35 models in here, right? That's equivalent almost to three chimeras, but you're not going to have as many wounds, right? A chimera is 11 wounds each. So if you brought three chimeras, it'd be 33 wounds, a toughness nine with a three up save. Here you have 18 wounds with toughness 11, two up save. So there's a little bit of trade off there where you're not going to have as many wounds on the table and that could matter for your resiliency. This thing will be tougher to crack on its own. It'll obviously stick around a lot better than a single Chimera. Uh, it's really replacing two Chimeras when you think about the point trade-off and losing all the buffs that a Chimera gets compared to the Crassus. Transport capacity, it's three of them, but just keep that in mind. And this is why I wouldn't maybe necessarily recommend taking three Crassus armored transports in a list. What I would typically do is take one of these and two Chimeras if I'm running Mechanized Guard. Like kind of combined arm Mechanized Guard list, right? But this is also the way that if you wanted to do heavy infantry focused Mechanized Guard, like huge blobs like I'm showing here, then two or three of these is the way to do it. It's, it's what it could, without going into Legends, it's the thing that's gonna be able to get you driving around the table and disembarking your infantry. The only other thing in the Astromole term that's a transport, it's not legends, that can move infantry around en masse like this can is the Hades Breaching Drill. And I'll cover that in a different video at another time. But the Gorgon is, and legends can also transport, I think 35 models. Uh, but once again, that's legends. And unless you play a lot of narrative events like I do, legends are probably not welcome. So you probably won't have the ability to do that. But check out the Gorgon model also. Beautiful model. And I'll tell you who to check out who painted one. Katie and Shock blog. Katie and Shock painted up a beautiful Gorgon and you should go check it out on his blog or his Instagram page and see what that model can look like. I'll cut it out or just Google it. There's all kinds of cool ones out there. So overall, summary of this, I think the Crassus is a viable unit. I think it has a place in the guard. I think you can build decent lists with this. Are you gonna win a Super Ranger GT because you brought a Crassus? Probably not. But are you going to be competitive? Are you going to have fun? You can do both of those things, yes. And so that's something to keep in mind. Most of us aren't playing in the world's biggest um, competitive events. You know, I'm glad to see some of the narrative stuff getting more popular. And so kudos to that. And casual play. Just keep in mind, like at your local meta, this is going to stick around and this is going to do well. Uh, whether you're playing casually or competitively or a mix of both. And it's going to be a fun, great unit to have. And it gives good buffs for guard and allows you to transport your infantry in a way that a lot of us dream about being able to do now that we can take 20 man uh, units in 10th edition with all of the attached characters to them. So would I recommend you to get a Crassus Armor Transport? If you're interested in building a resin model and you're interested in having fun, oh, well, let me remind you about that. For having fun, not saying this is a bad unit. It's not a bad unit. But it's not going to like, it's not, you're not going to smash your opponents just because you have this. But you're going to have fun. You're going to have a good time. It definitely changes up your strategy. It changes the way you think about list building and playing your army. And this brings that to the table for you and allows you to be a different type of commander than maybe what your opponent was expecting. So definitely check this model out. Definitely give it a try if you can get your hands on one. It's a very, very fun hobby kit. So you're going to have fun building and painting it no matter what. And I think now too, just keep in mind with the new uh, stowage and the kind of equipment that comes in like the Robo Dorn and other kits, you could really slap some more stuff on here, backpacks and other things and make this really awesome. I've also seen people put sandbags on it like they do sometimes with transports in real life. And so that's kind of a cool thing you can also do with this model and just have a great time with it. So definitely check it out and definitely try it. And if you see one, go look. Um, you'll see me at events definitely running this when I get the chance, uh, but go check it out. And I think it's a model definitely worth considering and hobbying with. So that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. 
If you want to support the channel, uh, you can do so by actually purchasing the movement trays I've shown here or going and buying uh, brushes or wet palettes from Red Gas Games using my links below in the video description. Mostly, I hope you subscribe. I hope you like the video. I hope you're enjoying my content and I hope you come back for more of it. So I'm doing this because I enjoy talking about the guard. I enjoy talking Warhammer 40K and uh, I like to bring neat ideas like this out of the box to you all. And so I hope you've had fun listening to this and thinking about possibilities with this unit. Now, didn't go over every combo, didn't go over every option, just went over a few highlights, a couple really cool things you could think about doing with this. So keep that in mind. If you have something that you want to get out there to everybody, put it down in the comments below. I want to hear it. If I've made a mistake, please put it in the comments below. I love critical feedback to help out and to make sure I'm getting things accurate and making better content in the future. But as always, the most important thing, have fun wargaming and remember, Katie is stand.